Welcome to this YSL tutorial on Report Builder 2016. In this part of the series, we'll look at how you can apply grouping and aggregating in the Query Designer. We'll begin by building a simple query in the Query Designer and look at how to enable the grouping and aggregating feature. We'll look at the list of aggregate functions you can choose from and then show how to display the grouped dataset results in a simple report table. We'll include some extra information on advanced features, such as using the SQL editor to include the same field multiple times in the same grouped query. We'll also look at how you can use the cast function to control data types to make sure, for example, that you can see decimal number results rather than just whole numbers. We'll finish the video with a quick reminder of some basic formatting features and how to apply interactive table sorting. So let's get started. I've started with a new blank report in Report Builder, and the next job is to create a data source which connects to the YSL Movies database. Just a quick reminder that if you don't already have a copy of that database, we have a video here which explains exactly how to obtain it. You can follow the instructions in the video to install the database, and click the link in the description below the video to download the script file that you'll need. Assuming you've done that already, we can create a new data source in the report by right-clicking Data Sources and choosing Add Data Source. If you created a shared data source in a previous video of this series, you may want to just use the one you've created already. Alternatively, you can create a new one by typing in a new name for the data source and then choose to use a connection embedded in the report. Click the Build button to help you construct the connection string. Type in the server name, in my case it's SQL 2016 Training and then you should simply be able to select the movies database from the drop-down list before clicking OK a couple of times to finish creating the data source. Now I'd like to create a data set which puts all of the films from the film table into different groups according to which genre they belong to. When I've grouped the data, I can then do things like count how many films there are in each group, find the sum of the runtime minutes and find the sum of the Oscar wins. To get started with that, let's right click on the movie's data source and choose to add a data set. We can call the data set something like films grouped by genre, just so we know exactly what's going to be in there. And then we can use the query designer to start building this query. Now we can add the fields we want to include. Let's start with the genre field from the genre table. If I expand the tables folder, followed by the genre table, and then tick the genre column. I can then go to the film table and include fields that I'd like to perform my aggregates on. So I'd like to count how many films there are. I'll include the film ID field for that. I also want to find the total runtime in minutes, so I'll tick the runtime minutes column, and then also the total Oscar wins, so I'll include that column as well. Next, I'd like to enable the grouping feature of the query designer, and I can do that by clicking on the group and aggregate button at the top of the designer window. Once I've done that, I get further options to apply to each field that I've selected. So for the genre field, I'd like to group by that field. For the film ID, I'd like to apply the count function, so I can click on the drop-down list for the grouped by option, and then choose count from the drop-down list instead. For runtime minutes and for Oscar wins, I'd like to apply the sum function, so I'll click the drop-down lists and choose those functions for each of those fields. You'll notice that the field names change their given aliases, which represent what aggregates been applied to them. So count of film ID, sum of runtime minutes, and sum of Oscar wins. At that point, I can click OK, and then click OK once more, and I'll find my dataset has been created. Next, let's build a table which shows the results of that dataset. I'll begin by removing the title text box by right-clicking on it and choosing Delete and then I can choose to insert a new table by right-clicking and choosing Insert Table. I'll position that in the top left-hand corner of the report, and then assign the fields to the table in the usual ways. I'll, I'll use the field selector to select genre, followed by count of film ID, followed by sum runtime minutes, and then I can simply click and drag some Oscar wins from the dataset list into the table, making sure it gets attached to the edge of the table with this vertical blue line. Once I've done that, I'll just change ever so slightly the width of the genre column and then run the report just to see what we end up with. So it isn't too difficult to create some basic groups and aggregated information using the query designer. But let's see what happens if we try to take things a little further. Let's try to include the average runtime minutes and average Oscar wins as well as the sum in our dataset. 
To do that, we'll return to the design view of the report, and then we can right click on the name of the data set and choose to view the query designer. What I'd like to do next is include the runtime minutes field again, so that I can apply the average function to it as well as the sum function. Unfortunately, the query designer doesn't provide an easy way to include the runtime minutes field a second time. I can't check the box again as it's already checked. If I did click there, it would simply remove the runtime minutes field from the query. Uh, there's no facility to click and drag to put a field into the selected fields list. Really, the only choice I have here is to edit the query as text, which basically involves writing some SQL code. So I'm going to click the Edit as Text button up at the top of this query designer to see what the query looks like in SQL view. We won't do too much complicated SQL writing here, just enough to show you the basics for achieving what we want to achieve. If you are interested in how SQL works, we do have separate video series which explains it in a lot more detail. For now, all I would like to do is copy and paste the line which calculates the sum of runtime minutes and then edit it so we can calculate the average instead. So that's fairly simple and straightforward. We can just highlight the line which calculates the sum of runtime minutes. We can right click and copy or press Ctrl and C. You can then provide yourself with a new blank line somewhere in the select list. So somewhere between the word select and the word from is where you need to paste in your list of selected fields. So I'll give myself a blank line just before the from keyword, paste in what I've copied by pressing Ctrl and V. And then I can alter the function that's being applied by changing the word sum to the word AVG instead. So I can change sum to AVG. It makes sense as well to change the alias that's being used. So rather than calling this sum runtime minutes, I can change that to average runtime minutes. It's important that the alias after the as keyword doesn't contain any spaces, which is why there's an underscore character here to make the, uh, the alias a complete word. Once I've done that, I can do the same thing for the sum of Oscar wins. So I'm going to copy that line sum of Oscar wins. I can then give myself another blank line somewhere towards the end of the select list and paste that in by pressing Ctrl and V. Once again, I can edit the text from sum to AVG and then change the alias so that that says average as well. Once I've done that, I can check the results of the query by clicking this, uh, this red exclamation mark button. And if I do that, I'll see the results listed out here. When I'm happy with the results, I can click OK and then see those new fields added to my data set. All I need to do then is drag these new fields into my table. And then I can run the report, check that it looks sensible. And there we go, some extra aggregates using the same field multiple times. One thing you might notice that's slightly odd about the averages we've just calculated is that the results are shown as whole numbers. If you were to manually calculate 19,499 divided by 166, for example, you wouldn't end up with exactly 117. The reason we end up with whole numbers for the aggregates is a feature of SQL Server. Because the columns containing the runtime minutes have a data type which is a whole number, then the result of any aggregates will also be whole numbers. We do have a, a, another video which explains in a little more detail about how data types work in SQL Server. So there's a, 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 tape, uh, a video which explains basic table design if you're interested in a little bit of background information. Really all we care about here is how we make sure that we actually get the decimal result rather than the whole number result. And in order to do that, we'll need to return to the query designer. So let's head back to the design view of the report and then right click on the data set and then choose query again. You'll notice that this time when we've opened the query designer, it launches immediately into the SQL or the text view. And that's because what we did in the previous stage, adding in these averages, referencing the same field names again, means that we can't display this query any longer in the basic designer. If you did attempt to return to the basic designer by clicking edit as text, it will tell you that it will abandon the changes you've made. So it will remove the average runtime minutes and average Oscar wins. So I don't want to do that. I'll click no to make sure I avoid doing that. What I'd like to do next is alter the data types of the runtime minutes field and the Oscar wins field as they're being used in the average function. Now, again, don't worry too much about 
the specifics of this. We have further videos which explain how to write SQL code, as I mentioned. But what we're going to do is use a function called cast, which will alter the data type of each of these fields. To make this work, I need to click into the parentheses after the average function and then begin by typing in the name of the next function, which is called cast. I can then open some more parentheses. I can refer to the field I want, whose type I want to change. That's runtime minutes. At the end of the field name, I can then say as, followed by the name of the data type that I want to use. Again, the video I pointed out explains a lot more about SQL Server data types. The one that I'm going to use in this case is simply called float, which is short for floating point number. So it's a number who can have a, a, a varied number of decimal places. I then need to close an extra set of parentheses for the cast function. I then need to do exactly the same thing for the Oscar wins field. So if I head down to the next line, again, go just after the average function, type in cast, open some round brackets, head to the end of the Oscar wins field name as float, and then close another set of round brackets. Once I've done that, I can click OK. And if I now just run my report again, having done that, I can now see a somewhat more accurate, although slightly messier picture of the average runtime and average Oscar wins. At this point, the rest of the work really just involves tidying up the report's design. We can change the numbers here to have just two decimal places. We could format the column headers and maybe apply some sorting or even some interactive sorting to the table. Back into the design view, let's begin by changing the number of decimal places displayed for the average runtime and average Oscar wins. If I want to do that for both cells at the same time, I can select them both and then use the format property in the properties window. If you can't see the properties window on the right hand side of the screen, head to the view tab and then tick the properties box. When you can see the properties window, with both cells selected, scroll down until you can find the number format property. In the format property, you can type in a short code 0, 0.00. We'll cover custom number formats in a bit more detail in a later video in the series. If you're not confident writing those, remember, of course, you can always use the basic tools in the ribbon to format cells. You can also right click on a single cell and choose text box properties to provide you with lots more formatting options in the number page. Anyway, having done all this, I'll run the report again and see a, see a slightly nicer, neater tidier number format. Next, I'll apply some basic formatting to the column headers and then apply some interactive sorting so that the user can decide what order the results should appear in. Back into the design view, I can click into a single cell in the table and then click on the gray box to the left of the header row to select the entire thing. I can then change the background color of that using a simple tool in the ribbon. And then I can also change the font color and then maybe make the font bold as well. To apply interactive sorting, as you may remember from a previous video, you need to start by selecting the cell that you want to see your little drop down list or your button appear within. So to start with, I'll make sure the user can sort in ascending and descending order of genre name. To do that, I can right click on the genre header cell and then choose text box properties, choose interactive sorting, choose to enable interactive sorting and then choose which field from the data set I want to use to apply the sort. So I'm going to use the genre field to avoid confusion. I wouldn't want to click on the genre column header and sort by the number of films, for example. Once I click OK, I can then repeat that process for each of the other columns or at least as many of those columns as I want to apply interactive sorting to. So it's just a case of going through the same process once each for every column. So I'll just do a couple more just so you get the idea. You're welcome to add the interactive sorting to every single column if you like. Once I've done a few, I can click run to preview the report. And there we go, a slightly nicer looking report with a little bit of interactivity for the end user as well. So I can see which genre has the most uh, most films in it. Action, clearly, because it's clearly the best genre. I can see which genre has the, uh, the shortest total runtime or the longest total runtime and so on and so on. So there we go, some basic information about how to apply grouping and aggregating to the query which populates a data set.
Of course, this isn't the only way to achieve this set of results, and you may find that the techniques covered in this video aren't applicable to the dataset you're using, for example if you're using a store procedure to get your query results. That's why the next video in the series is going to explain how you can achieve this set of results by applying grouping in the report. So join us for that one to see how that works. Thanks for watching, see you next time.